Hey everybody, uh, Dave Forrest here with uh, my good friend Harvey Lowe, uh, Garage Studio Modelers. Uh, we're back. We're back. We're back. It's yeah. been it's been uh, it's been almost three years. Amazing, eh? Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So we'll start with the uh, the Panzer thirty eight T. So this was actually the last uh, model that uh, that I was working on uh, before we kind of shut things mm -hmm. down for a little bit. And this is the Tamiya kit out of the box. Um, beautiful kit. As all Tamiya kits are these days, especially like they just they just fall together, and this was really just a kind of a weathering and painting project. Um, but the kit really doesn't need anything else. Like it, it's, it has Lincoln length tracks. Um, it, the barrel comes uh, hollowed out. Uh, you know, it, you get a little photo etched screen for the uh, engine grill at the back. Uh, you know, like that Tamiya mm -hmm. nickel yeah. photo. It's not really brass but, but it's kind of that nickel photo but it works it works very well it's so all the same needs all in the kit or did you do in the aftermarket no that's all in the kit wow. this, is, this is purely uh purely out of the box nice um, now now this three years ago is when we did our last episode was it released out back then about three years ago then this the kit yeah. yeah yeah it just came out yeah, yeah that's right. and um yeah I, I wanted to you know something i wanted to do on the channel because it was a quick and easy yeah. build and finished it uh Actually, kind of almost recently, <laughs> it's sat. It's sat yeah, because he was like, "We need to do some episodes." Yeah, I gotta get something. Yeah, done. I gotta finish this out. So this was one of the uh, this is one of the eighteen in progress builds I have. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good to get this one uh, this one uh, out and done. Um, well, let me ask you, Dave. You, you, you know, I've I've seen this model in bright light up close, and you know, Robert does a terrific job with with the filming here. But I, I'm really mm -hmm. amazed with your weathering. And maybe no, you can talk uh, a bit about that because I because I looked at that. And you, were you using mostly powders? Yeah. And yeah. So this so this you know maybe I'll flip it over yeah. and you can see because on the bottom is where there's a lot of weathering. Um, yeah. This is this is powders and oils and enamels. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's really like three things uh, that I used um, to create that, and, and you know, and some like I've kind of gotten away and tried um, a night shifts technique of using uh, paste mm. and then coloring that, spraying over it. But I just I find pig I, I keep coming back to pigments yeah. because it, they just they they kind of suck up like oil stains very nicely, mm -hmm. right? And you kind of work it in, blend it in. It, it has a bit of a texture to it. So I don't know. I'm a uh, I know pigments have fallen out of favor lately, but I still like them. I, I still like, like them to too. Use it's them. got a nice three D effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you didn't use the acrylic paste this time. This no. is all powders. This is all yeah, powders. See, yeah. See, it's hard to see, folks, but if you look at this closely, it's got that layered three dimensional. There's a bit of light mud, dark mud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you can just play with the yeah. tones with with washes, mm -hmm. right? And oils and yeah, kind of work it in. Um, so yeah, so this was this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun to do. Mm. Um, so it's a great look at if somebody's looking for kind of a palette cleanser build. Mm -hmm. This is this is a great option, right? It's a single it's color. Yeah. You can really play with the, the Panzer Gray. I've got some some blue tones in there. I like to use that uh, uh, kind of those bluish grays that uh, mm -hmm. come in the Tamiya lacquers. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know if they're gull. I can't remember if they're gull gray or, or what they are, but they have a bit of a bluish hue. So start with the with the uh, Panzer Gray and then kind of work those colors in and kind of lighten it up. Again, it's a bit of artistic yeah. license that yeah. like we talked about in our. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Panzer Gray episode, but uh, filters too, right? You use filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always use filters just to give the different panels yeah. a slightly different. Uh, but that's your own mix, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and I just by eye. Like yeah. I, if you ask me to give you the ratios, I, I can tell you. But yeah, I just kind of do it by eye. Well, there, watch that episode on Panzer Grays. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk enough about this. Let's talk about one of your more armor. armor. More armor. So that is pretty much out of box. Uh, and this, some of you may have seen this at shows. <clears throat> this looks like an odd. It's uh, an odd an beast odd contraption. Um, this is, uh, uh, this was done, I think about a year and a half ago. And if you want the details, I think it's in the October, uh, October, 2021 issue of Tamiya magazine. Uh, but this is at the, at the other, um, spectrum. Again, I build out a box a lot, but this one is a scratch build conversion. You can probably recognize it's, it's Japanese sitting on a, a Chiha chassis. Um, and this is a 120 millimeter um, naval gun. It, I believe it's a Type 10 naval gun off off a battleship, and it's essentially a 120 millimeter self-propelled 
um, Chiha mm. that was operated by the naval forces in, in uh, defense of Japan, and this is the ammo trailer. Um, is this a kind of uh, what if? No, it's not. They, so they actually built these. Yeah, oh yeah. Also, they might not have fired a shot in anger. No. But they they, they built these and they're fully intended to use them. Yes, I think there's only one well-known uh, photo of this. Uh, you can find it on the net if you just type in like 120 millimeter. Chiha, mm -hmm. you'll find it. Uh, of course, in Japan, maybe they've got other um, uh, pictures, but it existed. And it did fire on training. Okay. Now, the readers out there, maybe some of you listening from Japan, you've got a lot more on it, but I've just remembered hearing that uh, this vehicle, look, it even, look, it even moves, eh? Let's see that it moves but you couldn't, up. now, if I remember, you couldn't fire it in this position, no. because if you did, the whole it, thing It might just, tip over. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to kind of line up. Yeah. I don't know how many they built. Yeah, you'd have to line it up like this. Um, but it, it basically is a conversion scratch build. There is a yellow cat conversion, which gives you parts of, of the hull. See, the hull top is not exactly a Chiha. It's got these plates where the guys stand on. This is different. Yellow cat does make one if you can get one, but it's not very good. The castings are very rather poor. It's, maybe, I think, maybe 10, 15 years old. Mm. Very rare. So I ended up using that to make my own parts. Uh, and so those are scratch built. Yeah, basically. these are all wow. scratch built out of styrene. The gun itself <clears throat> is also mostly scratch built. I might have used one or two parts from the Yellow Cat kit. But if you guys are out there and want to do something different, you can always buy the conversion kit, but if it doesn't satisfy you, replace it if you want. Uh, I just replaced it because it was too bit too crude. Easy for you to say. Okay? You're so good at scratch building. No. Like, I don't know. For me, that's kind of a bit intimidating. But. It, it just gives you something for your collection. Uh, it, by the way, um, these colors are what, uh, through research and um, some of the guys in Japan helped me out on this. Thanks, Taki. Uh, the, they were this color. They were not naval gray. So is it is it like they were originally naval gray and there's like green over spray? Yeah, is the that gun, what this is? The yeah, gun. Yeah. You can okay. kind of see in photos it seems like it's camouflage. Yeah. So I did the gun in naval gray with green. Um, Which makes sense. Uh, yeah, that, makes that makes, sense. And again, some of it's conjecture. But that's what you, I mean, that, but that's part of the art of the hobby. Right? Yeah. It's like if you have a picture and you kind of see something on the picture, but you don't have anything else, you've got to kind of draw conclusions from it that are logical. That is a good point. So. Right. What, where do you push the envelope? You know, we call them rivet counters, right? They're, just, they're everywhere. But I think that if you have enough information out there to do something, but there's not enough information to disprove it, you can always push the envelope and say, all right, this could well have been, mm. given the circumstances, until somebody actually comes out with a photo, then you can say, yeah. all right, I, I, make, I goofed up. And, yeah, and at the end of the day... It is a hobby. It's I a mean, hobby. we do this for yes, fun, yeah. in yeah. theory, right? So, Except when you drop a piece on the carpet and you can't find it for three months and it oh, comes up six months later worst. when you're not looking for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's but that's yeah. uh, that's the Chiha, and that's, it's in the Tamiya yeah. issue to look all the yeah, details. That's a unique piece for sure. Yeah, and same with you, I use pigments. Now, I didn't weather this a lot because they were fairly clean. This one, uh, oh, forgive me, it's it's in the magazine article. It's it's another company that makes the trailer. <laughs> And I just replaced the tracks, but... What do you use for the tracks? Uh, I believe it was from one of those um, Eastern European, like early, like late 30s, Polish tank cat, and I just cut them and kind of fit them, them on. on. <laughs> because the ones in the kit what? were so bad. Yeah, well, that's what you they do, were right? so bad. Yeah. And, and everything, everything comes off. And the gun moves, so I can I can play with it. Well, I mean, uh, I can display it in different. And how do you so the, the empty shell casings there, which are really nicely done? How do you fix? You just glue them on. Yeah, like, I just glue them. Super glue. Is that? Is yeah, that I glue use. Uh, yeah, I use a fact. Good point. Sometimes I use a mixture of both, five minute epoxy and super glue, because then mm. you know it's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But it's, and again, would they? I just throw them on for a different bit of contrast and color. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that works. Fun little project. Yeah. Right? Nice. There you go. Oh, and there's the. Bottom of that, same techniques that Dave used. I steal all my techniques from Dave. And that gives you a bit of idea of how you can apply powders as well, not only on a Panzer Grey, but on uh, other different uh, yeah, color bases. Nice so, done. Next.